I think it's dead. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. Hi friends, welcome back to Botanical Woman. I'm Christine, and today I'm going to talk to you about buying an elbow stick. I obviously have bought not one, but two, just for safety. I paid $80 each for them, so $160 for a wet stick. A wet stick. This is one of them. It is already dead. I bought, yeah, it was three months ago that I bought this. I had very low expectations, even though I obviously spent the money. I wanted to try it. It is a plant that I would like to have. I do think it's really beautiful, but I just don't think it's worth, you know, $350, $450, whatever, whatever the crazy going prices these days. So yeah, I decided to take a risk and buy the wet stick and try propagating it. I've learned a few things since, so I'd like to pass that knowledge on to you guys. So if you're considering buying an elbow stick, here are some of my recommendations. There are many things for you to consider and some of them will be harder for you to find out. But one of the things that I realized is how old your node is. Like, so if the person cut it, you know, a month ago, two months ago, that's important. But also where on the stem the node is coming from is also important. I don't have direct experience with, say, an elbow because I obviously don't have one. But with my Raphidora tetrasperma, I noticed that the younger growth that part of the plant is much more alive than say closer to the root part and those nodes actually rooted a lot slower they did end up rooting but not all of them and some of them rotted so basically what that's telling me is that this is why when you're on the marketplace looking for a cutting usually the top cut will be sold for more money because it is more of a guarantee that the plant is still viable and it can grow. That's not to say that you can't use something like Kiki Paste to try to stimulate growth out of it. I've not tried myself, but you know other people have used it and it seems to work for them. So if it's something that you're interested in trying, Kiki Paste is something to consider. When the seller cut it, it's going to be important. And then also where the node is on the cutting is also important. And sometimes they might not even be able to tell you that if they've you know cut a bunch of cuttings and they just cut it all up and they got all mixed up, they won't know, but a good seller should know that. It makes a big difference if they're selling you a node that's all the way at the bottom closest to the root versus the top. Another thing I would say is when I got these, I was very surprised at how thin they are. I mean, this is already shriveled up, but if you can, I would try to get a bigger stump, they'd call it, because when the plant finally does grow, if it does, you'll get a bigger plant out of it. So that's good. You'll get a stronger plant. In addition, the variegation of the stick is the only thing that you have to really tell you what the variegation might be like when it grows. So for me, I think it is safer to get one that has more even variegation versus you know a completely half white stick with half green because then you're more likely to get these what they call these beautiful half moon leaves, but the white does not stay. It ends up yellowing and browning because the plant is giving up on that part of the plant because it's just sucking energy from it. So please know that about your elbows. When you get your node or when you're looking at the nodes, you wanna make sure that there is enough uh, stem material on either side of your node because sometimes you will get rot like this rotted a little bit you know you don't want it to eat into the node tissue right away so give yourself you know this is about an inch on both sides which is pretty good and also like making sure that both sides of your cutting is also calloused over when they give it to you because you don't want to buy a cutting that is rotting already so there's that and, and that's not to say there's no hope it's just you know you're starting with something that's already rotting 
I paid $80. I think that that was the going rate at the time. And I obviously wasn't able to ask the question of how long ago this cutting was cut. Um, because it's already been three months. So that means that for me, this stick has been dying for three months under my ownership and then however long the previous owner had it. So I'm guessing this is already five to six months down the road since this was cut. And the likelihood that the other stick that I have in the fish tank right now is going to grow is chances are pretty slim. It hasn't rotted, but it hasn't done anything. So let's say you have the stick now. I would definitely put it in a propagation box. You want high humidity. You want to put it on a heat mat. You want to keep it warm. You want to induce the environment of summer and high humidity always helps with propagating things. And that is definitely true with Monsteras. I would use a highly airy medium. So something like Leca or bigger chunks of perlite will do really well. People also use sphagnum moss. If you do use sphagnum moss, I would highly recommend you squeeze as much water out of the sphagnum moss as you possibly can and then use it. A lot of times people don't wring enough water out and then that ends up causing rot. In theory, water propagation should work. Actually, that's why. It, so two months. Yeah. So for two months, the stick did nothing. And then what I did was I took it out of the propagation box and then I transferred both of them over to the fish tank because it's been there for two months and it just, yeah, it hasn't, didn't do anything. And when I moved it over, this is when um, the yellowing happened. I just don't think that if I kept it in the propagation box the way it was, it would have done anything. It just wasn't. And I figured I was taking risks and like changing its environment to see if it would do anything. So like I said, the other stick is in the aquarium being water propagated. It worked really well for the Raffidora tetrasperma and for some of the other propagations that are going on over there. But if you can buy an established plant and you can afford it, I would really go that route. It is people like me who don't want to spend that money. We take the risks and sometimes you win and sometimes you lose you're gambling. Would I do it again? Probably not. I'm kind of over it now. It's just ridiculous to me. Like just this whole how much plants are going for these days. As you know that I recently just started my own aquarium. So I've been really enjoying that. But if you decide to buy an edible stick, try to get all those questions answered. And if they can't answer it, save your money, go somewhere else. And I hope this video helps you and until next time, happy growing.